you started an Etsy store and you're ready to get more traffic and sales, but you're not sure how to do that, or there's just a lot of options to weigh, like you could be spending time scrolling TikTok for trending audios or Instagram doing the same thing in order to make reels, or you could be posting to Facebook, but does anyone really do that anymore? I'm not really sure. Or you could spend about 60 to 90 minutes a week implementing a Pinterest marketing strategy, which is what I'm gonna walk you through today. How to promote your Etsy store on Pinterest. I recently, and by recently, I mean last fall, started an Etsy and a Shopify store for my brand. Now I've gotten the majority of all my sales through my Shopify store, however, I have gotten some sales from Etsy as well. And I wanted to just walk you through with my own Etsy store and my new Pinterest account, exactly what you need to do to promote your Etsy shop on Pinterest. A couple of little housekeeping things before we get started related to Etsy, because I'm going to get these questions, I know it. In fact, I've gotten them already on other videos. So I published this video here on how to claim your Etsy, Instagram, and your blogs for Pinterest. And that video is obviously out of date when it comes to Etsy and Instagram because you can no, you can no longer claim anything other than your own websites. So, number one, you cannot claim your Etsy store anymore. So if you run across any videos where it's telling you to claim your Etsy store or any blog content where it's telling you to do that, you know just with that simple fact that that piece of content is out of date and you need to find a newer piece of content to learn from. Number two, and this is something that a lot of people creating these Pinterest type videos for Etsy and Shopify and Teachers Pay Teachers do not realize, and I'm going to let you in on this little secret. So you can spend all the time in the world writing Pinterest descriptions and linking them to your product listings on Etsy. However, that product description is going to get overwritten with a description from Etsy. So what happens, and I'll reference this later in the video as well when I show you, is you have this product listing on Etsy, you've written this really great description hopefully for the platform. When Pinterest picks up that it's a product pin, it pulls the metadata from Etsy and it puts it on that Pinterest pin. So. Just so you're aware, the only time that you will make your own Pinterest descriptions related to your Etsy products or your Etsy store is if you're linking to catalog or collection type pages. In that case, it's not a direct product pin and your description that you write will stick. So now that those two housekeeping items are out of the way, let's talk about how you're gonna get sales from Pinterest to your Etsy store. First things first, your products, when you pin them to Pinterest, are going to show up in a number of different surfaces on Pinterest. The first one is the home feed, and this is a myriad of different pins published into someone's home feed based on their activity on the platform. Now, the Pinterest algorithm is basically just math, and it's mathing, it's doing formulas based on engagement on Pinterest pins in certain topics on keyword searches that are being made. So when you are pinning products from your Etsy store on those topics or on those keywords that someone was searching for, they will then see or have the ability to see your pins in their home feed. Now they'll also see your pins in their home feed if they have engaged with or followed you at all in any way. They'll see more of your pins in their home feed if they follow you and they'll see even more pins in their home feed if they're regularly saving your content. That's those signals are feeding into those math formulas, those equations on Pinterest for that algorithm to show them more. Now, other surfaces on Pinterest that your content's going to show in are the search feed, the related tab, which is underneath a Pinterest pin. So if they close up on a Pinterest pin, it's gonna be underneath and you can see that here. There are also the created tab, which is on your profile. They'll see your pins on their boards and they may also see your pins in the shop tab. So there's a number of different ways that they are going to be able to see your content. Now, one last surface that they may see your content is in the idea pin watch feed and the today tab. The today tab is specially set aside for pins that Pinterest is handpicking to place there, but they oftentimes will pick products and pins 
from creators and put them in that Today tab and you'll get an email notifying you that that happened. Now the idea pin watch feed, you're only gonna show up there if you're creating idea pins and we're gonna get into an idea pin strategy later in the video. So the number one way that you are going to get Pinterest to send you sales to your Etsy store is by creating and sharing your content to Pinterest. And that's pretty much the only way. You have to be there. Otherwise, you're not gonna get sales. So let's dive right on into how to optimize your profile for your Etsy store. Now here in this picture, you can see that I have a profile banner, a display name, and I have my bio filled out as well as my website. Now, one thing you will notice is that I'm actually linking my main link on my profile is displayed to be my Shopify store. Now you can have, you, at one point you could have multiple different URLs. At, at this point, it's only allowing you to have a URL if you don't have anything else claimed. It's only allowing you to have your claimed URL there. So if you are a seller like myself, where you have a Shopify store and an Etsy store, it's going to automatically probably, I have not figured this out yet, default to the Shopify store, whatever's claimed. If you don't have anything else and it's just the Etsy store, then your Etsy link will be there in your website. To optimize your Pinterest profile, you really want to start out with a very optimized banner. This is like a billboard for your business. My banner is telling people that they can get a Pinterest strategy if they join my Pinterest Academy. You can put a free thing here on my Etsy banner, on my store, I have a free pin templates link. You could put something free there. You could put your latest product drop there. If you wanted to update this with the seasons, you could also do that. I would encourage you to actually get a Pinterest banner. I sell these in my Etsy store, ironically enough. Um, I would have a Pinterest banner template and just make copies of that. The one that you love, the one that you wanna use all the time and just switch it out whenever you see fit. Now, the next thing that you want to do is optimize your display name. Your display name should have at least a main keyword that you want to rank for when you type in that keyword on Pinterest. So if you sell time management printables, you may want to have a time management printables keyword in your display name. So you can start with like Amy and that up and down line and then next to it have creator of all things time management and productivity printables or something like that. When someone searches for that keyword, ideally your profile is gonna come up in those search results. The next thing that you wanna optimize is your bio. Your bio allows you about 500 characters and you really wanna prioritize the first 140. That space is actually what people are gonna see before they even click the more icon. And you want to make sure that you're using keywords in this place as well. In fact, you may want to use a little emoji, the little finger pointing emoji that points towards your URL and then start off with what you do, who you serve and how you serve them. And that should be about 140 characters. If you wanna see this in action, make sure you go to my Pinterest profile. It's pinterest.com forward slash Heather Ferris Co. And you can check out how I have my main Pinterest bio set up. If you wanna see the Pinterest account I'm showcasing in today's video, it's pinterest.com forward slash pin profit academy. Now the next and the most important thing on your profile, in my opinion, are your boards. You wanna make sure that you optimize your Pinterest boards for search. We're gonna talk about Pinterest SEO in a moment, However, once you've nailed down your SEO strategy, then you're going to use those main keywords that are related to your products to create boards. So if you take a look at my Pinterest boards, then you will see that I have a board that's Pinterest templates for Canva. I have another board that's how to use Pinterest for business. And those two are very, very strategic keywords. I wanna rank for those keywords for my pins, but I also wanna rank for those keywords for my boards. So when someone searches for that topic, my SEO, if I pin a pin to the how to make pins for Canva or Pinterest templates for Canva board, I put a Pinterest templates for Canva pin on that board. The SEO on the board is then married to the SEO on the pin. They now go around the platform together like a happy little couple. So you wanna make sure that you are then filling out your Pinterest description very effectively. Now in this screenshot, again, let's pop it up on the screen so I can show you the, picture, the screenshot of the board. 
you can see the board title at the top and the board description. That description is 500 characters and you want to fill as much of that in as possible. Let's talk a little bit more in depth about your board strategy and what that should look like. So your Pinterest board strategy should be a combination of problem aware keywords and solution aware keywords. So what are those? What are problem aware and solution aware? If you've not heard of this before, it essentially is identifying where someone is is at in their buyer journey, their customer journey. You may have heard those phrases. If someone is using a problem aware keyword, chances are they have not landed on a product that is going to fit their problem and they're still on the hunt. If they're searching for a solution aware keyword, they've already identified their problem. Now they're just looking for a solution. They're looking for the product that's going to match that need. So your Pinterest board strategy should be both problem and solution aware. So the two examples I just gave you, how to use Pinterest for business is problem aware. Pinterest templates for Canva is solution aware. So I'm using both of those and your Pinterest board strategy should also include that. So if you are a time management principle seller, then you could have boards that are how to be more productive as a stay at home mom. And then you could also have a board that's time management printables for stay at home moms. Problem aware, solution aware. Same thing if you are creating digital planners. If you're a digital planner seller, you could have digital planners for small business owners and how to use digital planners on iPads. Problem or solution aware, problem aware. So you can see kind of how you could fit this into your own board strategy. And I would encourage you when you first are starting out, if you if you don't have a Pinterest account yet and you're brand new to Etsy and you're just starting out, I would start out with your main products or your most popular selling products and create boards around those first and then start to add more on as you go. Bonus points in your board strategy if you add a board cover to your profile. So this is what board covers look like. You can see here that I have the same theme across all my board covers on my profile. And I actually go a step further. I don't just add a board cover to the board. I actually create an entire Pinterest pin for my board cover, including an optimized title, description, and a URL. All of my board covers link back to my store in or my website in some way. So on my Heather Ferris Pinterest account, I have board covers that actually link to blog posts, um, free offers to join my email list, my Pinterest Academy, and individual products I sell. On my Academy Pinterest account, I have a mix of things over there as well. So I would encourage you if you do add board covers to make sure to link it somewhere because these are pins that live on the platform and you don't want dead pins on the platform. Let's now jump into your Pinterest keyword strategy or your Pinterest SEO strategy. You may ha have heard either term. Now, one thing that I would encourage you to do is make a list of your Etsy keywords that you are trying to target on Etsy and use those on the Pinterest platform to actually begin your research on Pinterest. This is really helpful for anyone that's kind of stuck in, in this like in between of, I don't know what people are searching for related to my product. Well, if you already have keywords in place, especially if they are Google or Etsy related, go ahead and use those and put them in the search bar. In fact, I've created a really short keyword tutorial that I'm gonna put in right here. Let's talk about how to find keywords for your Etsy store. So in this really quick tutorial, we're gonna switch over to all pins. And I want you to really focus on the keywords that people are using to actually find your products. And these could be the beginning of your Etsy keywords that you wanna populate over onto Pinterest. So I know I want people to find my Pinterest templates by looking for um, themes or like mock-up. So that's one that I use quite frequently is mock-up themed Pinterest templates or mock-up Pinterest templates. So I'm going to start with the obvious one, which is the product. What is the product? The product is a Pinterest template that are computer and phone mock-ups. We're going to start there. So in this example, if the product is a time management printable, we could start with that. We're going to put that in and you can see here there are products here that people are looking to promote as well as here. These could be free and they could also be paid. Um, we don't really know until we dig into the, either the Pinterest image or head over to their websites. So I can see that this is something that people are looking for is time and management printables and we're looking for worksheets too. So that might be an alternative option. But people might also be looking for productivity tools. Um, so let's mark this down as a keyword, but we're going to move on. 
All right, productivity tools. This is a lot of blog items. So this tells me that these this is a problem aware keyword. People are actually there. They have a problem and they're looking for how to be more productive or tips to be more productive and also tools to use to be more productive. So the other one was both kind of a problem and solution aware, whereas this one is definitely a problem aware. Um, there are products in here again. This one was actually on the previous page as well, the previous search. There are products lingering throughout. So this is essentially what you want to do to then go on and find additional keywords for your Etsy store. The, the thing you want to look at here are these bubbles across the top. If you don't have the bubbles across the top, simply go to settings and um, personal information and change your account to United States. And then you should theoretically get those bubbles at the top. Um, you're also going to look in the search feed for the related keywords. And then again, if you have a list of keywords that you're trying to rank for on Etsy or Google, bring those over to Pinterest and just populate them in the search bar. If you are loving this video so far, can you give it a like so other people like you can see it too? Thanks. Now that you know how to find keywords for your Etsy Pinterest strategy, let's talk about how to use them and make Pinterest pins. So you may be wondering what all you can even make pins for when it comes to your Etsy store. Well, honestly, the sky is the limit, but the majority of what you're going to make pins for are your products. One thing that I would say if you don't have one yet is to create some sort of a freebie and put it in your Etsy banner and also in your descriptions of your products. So, so people, if they are looking, they're not quite sold on you just yet because Etsy doesn't allow you to have free products in your store. Offer some sort of free thing that someone can sign up and get from your email list. For me, this is five free Pinterest templates. And if you go to heatherferris.com forward slash free dash Etsy or Etsy dash free, it's one of those, you can sign up for those free pin templates. So I give this away and I get people's email lists or get people on my email list. Once people are on my email list, I can then nurture them back to a sale. Now I'm not nurturing them back to Etsy. I'm actually nurturing them back to my Academy or my Shopify store, which is where the majority of my sales come from. You can nurture them back to Etsy if you want to, and you can easily do this with tools like ConvertKit, which is what I use, MailerLite, Flowdesk, MailChimp, if you wanted to, although I hate that one, ActiveCampaign. There's a number of different tools that you can build an email list on. And I would definitely encourage you, even if you're an Etsy seller, to have an email list. Give something away for free in exchange for that email address and then nurture them back to sale. Back to the things that you can make pens for, the freebie is one of them. All of your products in your store, your collection pages are also things you can make pins for. You can also make idea pins that are targeting different things related to the products that you sell. More on the idea pin strategy in a moment because I'm going to give you some actual examples of things that I have made. I'm going to go ahead and insert this really quick video on how to create Pinterest pins for your Etsy store so you can see it in action. For making pins for your Etsy store, you really want to start with your main keyword. So let's start off there. Now I know that TPT sellers are always looking to promote their products on Pinterest. It's a really great way to get some sales. Um, teachers also sell their, pay, uh, their products on Etsy too. So this might be really relevant. So what I want to do is um, I want to put in my main keyword over on Pinterest and just see if that is going to land me in the right place. It's a lot of like how to create pins quickly, you know, how to make a viral pin, how to make pins for TPT. All of that's great. Um, we're going to try a different one. Okay, so this keyword is very long tail. It's along the lines of what I want to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to my Pinterest pin and I'm going to just add a comment so I know what I want to uh, use here. And then I'm going to just start using some of those words and see what I can get. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And I've created these pin templates that are specifically for TPT stores. So I already drug this screenshot into this computer. Now what I'm gonna do is actually drag a another image in here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put my product image. We're gonna upload that in there. And then we have a um, fully editable, you know, your Pinterest pin, your final product. And then we have a screenshot of what all the pins look like. Now for this particular pin, the, the design here is very pink. So I'm going to actually 
mute down my brand colors and try to make it a, a bit more, um, like not as orange, <laughs> so the colors don't clash as much. So the black actually looks pretty good on the whitish kind of pinkish looking background. So we're gonna go with that and it doesn't clash as much. I could go as far as like making the pins match the actual Pinterest image here. And you know, you can do that. You don't have to stick completely to your brand colors every single time. So why don't we actually do that and make this text black. I like it. Okay, and then we're gonna make this pink and we're gonna add an effect, make it pop off the screen a little bit more. Now that we have our Pinterest pin for our Teachers Pay Teachers store, uh, to promote our Pinterest Pay, pay Teachers store, or our Etsy store in this case, um, you can see here I have a couple of other designs where I'm just calling out my main keyword, which is Pinterest templates and templates for content creators. And then this one is elegant pin templates. And this one is no text overlay at all. And these are all perfectly fine to promote. Um, let's do one more where we promote um, our store, but in with a long text overlay and maybe a different template. I'm not a huge fan of that one. Uh, let's see. And then we're going to just use different templates on this one so the images don't clash as much. Um, I like to have all of my folders in here lined up and ready to go with all the images ready and uploaded. So this is just part of my process of creating Pinterest pins is to always be organized and then if you want to, I'm not going to take the time to do this um, for everything on this, but if you want to, you can add some shadows to this and make it just pop a little bit more, just like that. So that says editable pin templates, shop the store, how to make pins for your, uh, to sell your teacher products. And in a gist, that is exactly what I would do. And then I would download all of these and get them scheduled. Okay. Now that you know how to make pins for your Etsy store that are standard pins, let's talk about how to make idea pins. And not how to make them because I didn't film that piece of the tutorial, but more along the lines of what to make for idea pins. Now I've made two examples of idea pins for you that I'm going to link in the description below, but I'm also gonna pop them up on the screen and you can see them here. So one way that you can make idea pins for Etsy store showcasing products is to do just that show people what products are in your store. So in this example, I'm giving three examples of Pinterest products that are listed in my Etsy store. And then I'm going in and grabbing the Etsy link in my browser and I'm uploading those on mobile and I'm tagging the products in the idea pin. So then people can click to the Etsy store and actually view the products and buy it. Now the second example that you're gonna see is more of a problem aware piece of content. So again, with your board strategy and your keyword strategy, that problem aware, solution aware strategy, do the same thing with your idea pins. Create problem aware content that's showcasing and solving a problem for someone with the product that you sell. You see companies doing this all the time, I'm sure, like food companies will do this. I was just on a call with a membership member actually, and she creates and sells a vegan food alternative products, like physical products in her store. And I was just strategizing with her that she could, she should create an ebook, a recipe ebook, showcasing both how to use the product in a recipe and how to substitute the product out if you don't have access to it. So this then broadens her horizons across the world instead of just in her own country where she's shipping this product right now. So I would encourage you to do the same thing. And in this idea pin, I am showcasing three ways to boost your sales on Etsy. And those three ideas, one of the three is actually to create Pinterest pins and I'm linking my pin templates. At the end of it, I also link a second set of pin templates which will also take them to my pin or my Etsy store. All right, one more example for idea pins for you before we move on. And that is if you are 
like I mentioned before, a time management printable creator. You could help people along with like five expert time management tips to do every single day to stay on track. And one of those tips could be using a digital planner, which then you could showcase in action because you sell digital planners. So I love living by examples. If you're looking for more examples in what to do, leave me a comment down below with what you sell and I will try to come up with some examples for you. So one of the last things that I wanna to talk to you about related to your Pinterest strategy is obviously how to schedule those Pinterest pins. Now there's a number of different ways that you can schedule your Pinterest pins. If you wanna check out this playlist here, hopefully I will remember to link it. If not, check out the description down below. I have an entire playlist on automation tools, including Tailwind, Planoly, Later, Circle Boom. I'm gonna have a video on Metrical at some point, but there's a whole list of them. You can use a Pinterest tool, or let me just show you this tutorial really quick. Let's just cut it in, and I'm gonna show you how to use the native scheduler. You can create these pins just right inside of the Pinterest Create tab. You simply need to drag and drop them over here. Um, you will want to go ahead and have your title and everything ready to go. So let me go ahead and create that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I wanted to actually show you a product that's actually listed live in my store. Um, so that's this one. This one is live in my store and I've got a, a base of a description here with a single keyword. I want to expand on that. So I'm going to do that really quickly and then I'm going to show you how to schedule this for later. All right, this pin is ready to go. We're gonna choose a board to put it on and we are actually going to put it on our Canva templates board. So between my two profiles, my Etsy Shopify store profile and my main profile here, I actually have a group board and then I have a standalone board as well. I created this one after I decided to, or before I decided to actually make this just a group board. Um, but I did wanna call something out here. You can actually, um, as of right now, you can tag products in your pins. This one's not letting me tag a product, but this one you can see I can tag a product in and Pinterest with their product tagging is glitchy at times. So just know that that happens. And then you wanna find your product in here, wherever that is, whichever template that is. And it's this one and we're gonna click save. That's obviously doesn't match this, but I just wanna show you how to do your product tagging. I do wanna make you aware at this time, I'm not able to schedule pins in advance if we tag products on pins. So if you want to be able to publish your pin for later, you cannot tag the product. However, if you do want to tag a product in your pin, you can do that and publish it now. So we have the board ready to go. We're gonna publish it at a later date and I'm gonna go ahead and click publish. And this is gonna go into our scheduled drafts. If you navigate over to your profile under the created tab, you'll actually see that scheduled pin here. You can actually go ahead and publish it now or delete it. Or if you did want to open that pin up, some profiles have the ability to edit pins. So if you made a mistake on the link, if you made a mistake on the board, if you wanna change the description or the title, you can do that on some accounts, not every account. You will have the ability, it will show you the ability to edit it if you do have that capability right now. So just wanna make you aware that is a feature that's coming to everyone. All right, now that you know how to use the native scheduler to schedule your Pinterest pins and tag your products on desktop, you have the full picture. The only thing missing here is analytics and you can, you can definitely come back. We can talk about analytics at a later date, but I will tell you this. If you're new to Pinterest or if you're just coming back after hiatus for a while, please ignore your Pinterest analytics for a little while. The only reason I'm asking you to do this is because I want you to be so hyper-focused on getting your marketing skill just honed in and getting these Pinterest habits built that you're not worried about what people are seeing, what people are doing with your pins. I just want you to, to find the keywords, to make the boards, to make the pins and schedule them for 90 days. That's what I want you to focus on. Now I have a little bonus tidbit of information and this has worked super well for my Shopify store, but it's also worked for Etsy. And the reason I know is because I have a very specific link that people can click and when they join, I can actually see that they came from Etsy. The only way that they can get this link is if they buy from Etsy because the Etsy deliverable and the Shopify deliverable are actually different. So 
Couple of bonus tips for you to boost your Etsy sales. Number one is through product reviews. Make sure you're encouraging people in your deliverable to go back and leave a review. Number two is user-generated content. Ask your buyers to tag you when they are using your product on Instagram and that you will share their stuff to your own Instagram, to your audience. People love to be just acknowledged. So when people tag me in my videos that they're watching on YouTube or videos they're watching in my academy or products that they're using that I made, I always reshare that to my Instagram feed and I put it in my user generated content list to share later. This is also going to be really good content that you can then go and pin and direct back to the product they purchased because people believe in what other people are saying. So if someone that is not you is saying that your product is the bomb, I am more likely to believe that person than you. So those reviews and those user generated content call outs are going to be great. The next thing is obviously to get that email list set up, which I mentioned earlier. Another thing that you can do is offer people a discount if they return and buy. So in your product deliverable, you can offer them a discount that's only available. You create the special code. It's only available for people who've purchased. This is another great way to bring people back to the fold, especially if they liked this product and they can get 15% off their next purchase. That's great. You can set your coupon to only be uh, used one, like one time per user. So make sure you set those rules up. And then the last thing that I would encourage you to do to generate more sales is to encourage people to follow you and save your content on Pinterest. So in that deliverable, ask them to follow you on Pinterest is one of those social media platforms because people don't know that we're on all the platforms because they don't see us everywhere. But if you're giving them your URL, your profile URL, and you're asking them to follow you, then this is a really great way for them to begin engaging with you and seeing your new pins as they are published. One little last bonus tidbit is to pin your product covers. I think I mentioned this in the, the pin creation video earlier, but if I didn't, this is definitely something that works really, really well, is pinning your product covers. In fact, here's a little video of me actually pinning my product photos and showing you what this looks like when they land on Pinterest. Okay, so this is a fairly new Pinterest account, so I don't have a ton of action or pins even on here just yet. Um, but what I do want to tell you is these product covers have done pretty well. This is These are the stats just for the last 30 days but they've done okay for me. So I would say to go ahead and pin your product images over to um, Pinterest as well. So what you can do is right up here in the um, listing tools, click save. And as long as you're logged into your Pinterest account, you can go ahead and save those to your account. You won't be able to schedule these unless you were to schedule them through Tailwind, which you can do. And then what will happen is the Pinterest uh, description will actually be your listing description from Etsy. So if we refresh this, you'll see that is there. Um, and the listing description actually comes through from Etsy. So when I told you that you need to really be sure that you're optimizing your Pinterest pins uh, or your Etsy descriptions for Pinterest, as well as for Etsy and Google, this is what I mean. And that is it, friends. That's how to set up, optimize, and begin running your own Pinterest marketing strategy for your Etsy store this year. I really hope this video was helpful for you. I will see you right over here in this video next. And don't forget to leave me a comment down below if you have anything else that you wanna learn.